In this video, I'll be exploring the basics of transposition. And this video is suitable for students who are studying transposition for the first time, which is equivalent to grade three of the Associated Board Music Theory exams, and anyone who wishes to recap on the basics of transposition. Essentially, this video will concentrate on the grade three Associated Board syllabus, whereby students are expected to transpose a simple melody either up or down an octave. This sounds simple, but because the exam board specifies the melody to transpose from one clef to another, it trips up a surprising number of students. This video is designed to clarify the confusion. So what is transposition? Well, transposition is a name musicians use when describing the moving of notes up or down. For example, here is a melody. And here's the note names to help us in this first transposition example. Here's the same melody again, but see that I've moved every note up one octave. Remember, an octave means seven notes. So the first note is still a C, but just one octave higher. All the following notes are also exactly one octave higher. We can therefore say that this melody has been transposed up one octave. Just be aware that if I drew this melody instead, all the pitch names remain the same, but they have been moved up two octaves. I would therefore say that it is being transposed up two octaves. So when dealing with transposition, there are two things to remember, whether to move the notes up or down, the direction, and how far to move them, the distance. In a grade three associated board music theory exam, the distance will always be an octave, but it is important that you remember this rule particularly when we, we are ready to look at more complex transposition. Okay, at grade three, you'll already be familiar with notes on the treble and bass clefs through your work at grades one and two. The last example I gave just transposed a simple melody up an octave using the same clef, the treble clef. However, it's a little more complicated than that in the exam. Specifically, the grade three transposition question will ask you to either transpose a given melody from the treble clef down an octave so that it is written in the bass clef or transpose a given melody from the bass clef up an octave so that it is written in the treble clef. In order to be successful at the transposition question, it's absolutely essential that you're happy with the link between the treble and bass clefs. Here's middle C in the treble clef. Here's middle C in the bass clef. They look very different. In the treble clef, the note is below the stave, and in the bass clef, the note is above the stave. However, they are, in fact, the very same note. I'll just rearrange these notes as they would appear in some piano music. And if I asked a pianist to play it, although that there are two notes, because they are the same note, the pianist would actually end up only playing one note, middle C. So why do we have two clefs to represent the same thing? Well, I'm just going to move both the bass and treble clefs rather close to each other so that the middle C on each clef overlaps. Both notes share the same ledger line, which I've highlighted red here. From your work at grades one and two, you'll already be able to identify what middle C looks like on both clefs. However, it is now really important that you understand that they are the same note and be able to clearly recall this overlap of the clefts as it is essential for your transposition work. It's not just middle C which is the same pitch on each clef. Here's the D on the treble clef. Here's the D next to the middle C in bass clef. You'll see that in both clefs it is just one step up from middle C. Therefore, the D in treble clef is the same pitch as this D in bass clef. Let's keep going. Here's an E and its same pitch in bass clef. Notice how the second ledger line, highlighted red, replaces the bottom line of the treble clef. We can keep this pattern going. Here's an F and the F in bass clef and so on. The higher we go, the more ledger lines we have to add to the bass clef notes. And I earlier asked why we have different clefs to represent the same notes. Well, here's part of the reason. Treble clef shows higher notes than bass clef. So rather than writing a passage like this, where all the ledger lines, to me anyway, make it rather confusing, using the treble clef removes the clutter of those ledger lines. 
Okay, so hopefully you're now feeling much more confident with the fact that even though notes are written on the different clefs, they are actually the same notes, just laid out differently. Let's try an example you might come across at grade three. Here's a very simple melody. You'll notice that it is in the treble clef, so the question at grade three will be to transpose it down the direction by one octave the distance to the bass clef. Now here's the common mistake. Let's overlap our answer with the melody given in the question. We can see that the middle C on beat four of bar one is the same as the middle C in the bass clef. Be careful, always make sure that you remember that link to middle C. This answer is incorrect because the notes have not been transposed. They are the same pitches. With this question, the best way to tackle it is to, one, work out the equivalent, but same pitched notes in the bass clef. Look for a middle C or notes near to one to help you with this. Remember, although your notes are now in the bass clef, they are not yet transposed. They are still the same pitches as in the treble clef. And two, then transpose the equivalent notes down an octave. It's these two golden rules you need to remember when dealing with transposition. If you remember them, and also that link to middle C, you'll have transposition sorted in no time. There's just one catch. You don't always deal with them in the same order. Look at this potential grade three question. If you try to work out the equivalent notes first, number one of our golden rules, you'd end up with lots of distracting ledger lines like this. I always try to avoid ledger lines. It makes life somewhat easier. In such a case like this, deal with the rules the other way around. So transposition first, and then find the equivalent notes in the bass clef. So we've already decided that working out the equivalent notes is a bit silly given the ledger lines it produce. So instead we'll do the transposition part of the rules first. All we do is move down our notes by one octave. Now that we've tackled the transposition, we can concentrate on working out the equivalent pitches in the bass clef, our golden rule number two. There's no middle C in this example, but there is a C sharp and we'll use that to work out the equivalent notes. And by working through the notes one by one, we have our answer. Just don't be tempted to move your bass clef notes down an octave. Remember, you've already transposed it when it was in the treble clef. Let's remind ourselves of that original question. We'll look at one final example, this time a grade three question, which requires us to transpose up the direction one octave, the distance from the bass clef to the treble clef. Before we look at the melody, let's just look at the golden rules as they require just a slight tweak. This time, rather than transposing down an octave, we need to transpose up an octave. The second rule remains, we work out the equivalent pitches. So here's our melody. Now remember, we can use the two golden rules in any order. However, it wouldn't make sense to work out the equivalent notes first in this example, as we'd end up with those nasty ledger lines again. It'd look like this. Instead, I'll deal with the transposition first, saying in the bass clef. So let's move all of our notes up one octave. Remember to take the accidental in the last bar as well. Rule one has been completed. We can now concentrate on just finding the equivalent notes in the treble clef, as per golden rule number two. There's no middle C, but by now, hopefully you can spot that there are two notes either side of middle C. There's the B below middle C in bar one. Let's use this as our starting point. And we now just keep finding the equivalent notes in the treble clef. Rule two is now complete and we have our answer. Let's just remind ourselves of the original melody in the bass clef. Remember, when dealing with transposition, always make sure that you know the direction of the transposition, and that'll either be up or down, and the distance of the transposition. If you don't follow these initial rules, anything you do from this point on will be wrong. Once you're clear on the direction and distance, follow these two rules. One, work out the equivalent pitches in the bass or treble clef, remembering to use middle C as your guide. And secondly, transpose the notes up or down, depending on the direction given in the question, an octave. But remember at grade three, that's the only exam whereby it will just be an octave. My next video will deal with more complex transpositional questions. I do hope this video has been useful to you. Thanks for watching.